Welcome and hello. This is a video exercise in HECRAS. And in this exercise, I'm going to demonstrate 1D, 2D connections. I'm going to connect a 1D river reach to a 2D storage area. And let's uh, see what that looks like. All right, so I'm going to start from the very beginning here. I've got my HECRAS up and open file. I'm going to create a new project and then navigate to my project directory. I'm going to go ahead and give that project a name or a title and then click OK. And then for the unit system, I'll go ahead and say OK. I'm using US customary unit system. So if you want to switch, you can just go up to options and then unit system. And uh, I guess that closes the geometric data editor. I can switch over to SI if I want, but I'm going to keep it at US customary. OK, so actually, I want to start in RAS Mapper. So I'll click the RAS Mapper button, or you can go uh, GIS Tools, RAS Mapper. And then I'm going to load in my geometry first. Actually, before that, I will select a projection. I'm going to go ahead and select my projection by clicking on this uh, Find File button. And then I have that saved over here in my projection files. Now, if you don't have a projection file that's already on your computer and easily accessible, you can go to the spatialreference.org webpage, um, allow you to search for your location, download the .prj file, and then use it here in this uh, coordinate reference system dialog box. OK, I'll click Apply and then click OK. Next, what I want to do is load in terrain data. I'm going to right click on Terrain, Add New RAS Terrain Layer, then click the little plus icon to navigate to that file. And then I have these files saved in terrain data. I'm going to click on this one here. It's a TIFF file, a GeoTIFF file. And then just need to make sure I'm using English units. And then go ahead and click OK. If you're unfamiliar with finding the terrain data you want and you're looking for data in the continental United States, that USGS tool is really helpful. I will leave a link to my exercise 30 in this HECRAS exercise playlist where I step you through how to download and import USGS terrain data into your RAS mapper. All right, it looks like that loaded fine, so I'm going to click close there. Here is my river. Here is the storage area off to the side. So we have the river that's flowing in the westward direction, and then we have the storage area. And let's go ahead and start making some edits. So I'm going to create a geometry file, right click, name it. I'll just call it base, and then I'll deal with the layer associations layer. And then uh, what I want to do at first is sketch in the river, and then I'll deal with the storage area. I'm going to click on my geometry, click on the edit pencil, and then click on rivers. And then, yeah, so add new element. And I'm just going to start clicking. Uh, this is defining the center line of the river. So just doing some single left clicks here as I pass by that storage area. I will create a lateral structure to connect the two a little bit later. And then I'll just do a double click right here. Uh, river one, reach one, that's fine. Next, I'm going to add some bank lines. This is going to be along the bank. Specifically, the left bank is what I'm sketching in now. OK, so that's good. Double click to end, and then I'll go back downstream on the right bank. Bank lines can be sketched in either the upstream direction or the downstream direction. But for that blue river line, you want to sketch that in the downstream direction. If you forget and already sketch it in, that's fine. You can reverse the direction later. Where am I going? OK, so I'm going to go ahead and delete some of these some of these dots at the end. Delete, delete, delete. And then let me just stretch this over here. That looks good. And stop editing. Yes, I want to save my edits. OK, I'm going to add in a few cross sections. So to do that, I need to click on my geometry again, start editing, click on cross sections, and then just sketch left to right as if I'm facing in the downstream direction. So there's one cross section. There's another. Let's go ahead and add a few more, three, four, and five. OK, that's that's plenty there. Next, I want to add my 2D flow area, which is going to be this pond right here. So I'll go ahead and click on 2D flow areas, expand that, click on perimeter first. I'll just go ahead and sketch in an approximate shape for that 2D flow area, and then double click for the final click. That's good. I'm going to name this pond, and then OK. All right, it's asking me for cell spacing, and then I'm just going to say uh, 100 feet in both x and y direction is good. So let's see what that looks like. OK, that looks good right there. And then let's sketch in our lateral structure. So I'm just going to go ahead and sketch that in just like that. It's asking for the node name. I'll just call this Levy. And then the width, we'll just go with something smaller, maybe 50 feet. OK, 
All right, so I'm going to click the stop sign to stop the edits. Say yes, I want to save the edits. It's telling me that I may need to make some edits to the lateral structure, this one right here. I understand that. I definitely need to make some edits. Um, that's where we're going right now. So let's go to Edit Geometric Data Editor, minimize the RAS mapper, and then open up that geometry file. So File, Open Geometry Data, click on Base. That's the name of the geometry file. Okay, yeah, there's. I definitely want to make it over the right bank, not the left bank. And also define the, the data for this lateral structure. So let's do, do that right now. I'll click on Lateral Structure. Okay, this is left over bank right here. I want to switch this to right over bank. And then for the tailwater connection, that's where I want to specify this storage area. Oops. So I'll click on not a cross section, but the storage area. And then I'll just specify that pond, which is the only option I have here. It's a 2D flow area, technically. Okay, so right here down below is my weir embankment. It looks like the length is about 600 feet, 625.5 feet. And the elevation is way up here at 35 feet. I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit higher so it's above the ground level. But then I'm also going to cut a notch into it so that the water surface, the water can flow between the 2D flow area, pond, and then my 1D river reach. So I'll click on weir embankment. And okay, so it's giving me a bunch of numbers here, and I'm just going to highlight them all and click delete. And then I myself will go zero, and then what was it, 625.4, something like that. I'll say 35 feet and 35 feet. So the width is 50, and that's fine. That's the same data I typed in earlier over in RAS Mapper. So it's good to see that that carried over. And then the distance from the downstream or from to the next upstream cross section is this distance here. And this is 3364, I think. And this is 1788. So I want something maybe halfway. And I also have to account for the length of the weir itself. Maybe 500. I'm sorry. Let's go with 500. So I'll type in 500 there. If I need to correct that, I can come back to it. So I'll go ahead and click OK. All right. That looks fine. Let me go ahead and add that notch in there. So as for an elevation, let me go ahead and check out what RAS Mapper is telling me for elevation values. I'm going to click on terrain and then just mouse over. So it looks like the river base is around 15 and a half feet, and then the pond is 10 feet. So I'm going to set some boundary conditions, our initial conditions. So the pond starts at something like 22 feet, and then the upstream boundary condition, like a stage hydrograph, would control this 1D river reach and make it something like 18 or 19 feet. And then if the notch is, would it just have to be something like 20, or it could be actually lower than that even. Let's make the notch 18 feet and see what that looks like. So I'm going to go back to the Weir Embankment Editor. I'm going to one, two, three, four, add some rows there, and then type in some station values. And then it should be, how about 50 feet wide? So I'll say 350. And then I'll say 35, 35. And what did I say? 20 or 18? Let's go with 18. All right. So click OK. There is the notch right there for the water to flow through. And now I'm thinking about the boundary conditions. So I'm going to go ahead and set that now. Edit unsteady flow. For initial conditions, I'm going to set the pond to how about 23 feet. That's the 2D flow area right here. And then the river reach, I'm going to click on boundary conditions. The upstream boundary condition will be a stage hydrograph. And I said 18 feet. So let's uh, just make that constant. So I'll just make it a day and then type 18 for a few more times. I'm not going to run this simulation more than a few days, so that right there is probably fine. Then I'll use the simulation time for the start of this flow data. Click OK. And then also a downstream boundary condition. I'll just say normal depth, and I'll say about 1% slope. I'm not sure if that's correct, but it's, it'll be fine. All right. Well, let's hope so. <laughs> File, and then save my unsteady flow data. I'm going to name this something like water surface elevation pond 18. I guess I could also put the water surface. Oh, the, the, the pond was 22. I'm sorry, or 23. The pond was 23. And then the river was 18. Okay, kind of goofy to name the file with the data in the file, but that's just how I'm doing it here. And then I'm going to close that. Let's go to run unsteady flow analysis. So for this plan, I'm going to just call the plan the same thing as that unsteady flow file. So if I want to make changes in the future, I can go ahead and just quick and easily view what the file name is. Save plan, then call it that. Okay, short ID, same thing. 
I'm going to run the geometry preprocessor, unsteady flow simulation, postprocessor, and then the starting date time. I'll just start at the beginning of the year. And then the ending date will be, let's just go 24 hours for this first one and see what happens. Well, let's see here. So file, save the plan. I'll go ahead and click compute. Okay, so I need to add Manning's end values to the cross sections. I forgot to do that. So I have what four or five cross sections here. Click on cross sections. And then what I need to do is define this value here. So it's currently 9999 and something like 0 0.05 is more realistic. And uh, I'll just go ahead and do that change for all of my cross sections here. Okay, I think that's the last one there. Okay, we're clear. Close that up, save the geometry data. And let's see if we have any problems running the model now. All right, I got some solutions for us here. Uh, what I ended up doing off camera and getting it to work was to add a warm up period. So to do that, you're going to go to your unsteady flow analysis. And then in the options menu, select computation options and tolerances. Now the warm up period is right here. Just go ahead and type in a number. So this is the number of time steps that uh, you're allowing your system to warm up. So 100 in this situation refers to 100 minutes. The computation interval is one minute for me. All right, let me go ahead and click compute and see what happens here. All right, that looks good. We'll go ahead and click close and let's take a look at some of those results now. What we're seeing here is the water surface starts. Yeah, I have water surface elevation toggled on here in my RAS mapper and I'm hovering over the pond. It says 21.7. So I believe that it started at 22 and in the first, what was it, 100 minutes, uh, it's drained down 0.23 feet. And then the river, we have 20. I changed the river to 20 if uh, I haven't mentioned that already. So the water surface elevation here is ranging from 21.7 down to 20. When I click the play button, I expect the pink to turn more of a red color as the water surface decreases. So let me press the play button and you can see that it's 20, 21, it's 20.5, 20 20.4, 20.3. It's slowing down as it approaches 20, of course. So our pond is now approaching that red color, pretty much all red now, but not quite as true red as uh, the 20 coloration is in the main reach. All right, so let me go ahead and just do a few more things here to look at results. I'll go ahead and click on the flow arrows. Okay, there's nothing flowing at the moment though, so let me back up to earlier in the simulation. So this is just a few minutes in. Oh, I'm sorry, this is for, for velocity. So here is velocity and here are the flow arrows. Okay, it's telling me that there's no flow arrows for max and min. That's fine. Let me go ahead and uh, do the particles. Maybe I just couldn't see the arrows because they're so small. Let me go ahead and uh, make them larger and also change their color to white. Okay, there, there you go. There's just not a lot of activity. There are a couple small arrows right here, which is where I would expect them to be. This is the inlet. I'm going to increase the density, increase the width, and increase the lifetime a little bit. I'll close that, and then I'll zoom in a little bit further. Okay, so we can see the arrows now. Arrows off, arrows on. And then as for the particle tracing, okay, I'm sorry, that's too much. This was the settings that I was changing earlier. I'm going to decrease the density, and increase the speed. We have a little bit of water that's flowing through the lateral structure right here. You can see them go. This is technically negative flow because I defined the lateral structure to be positive flow when it's in the river flowing to the, uh, the 2D flow area. Okay, let me go ahead and toggle those off. And it's also with the case with 1D elements like the river reach or the lateral structure. We can look at results by going up to view and then uh, profile summary table is one of my favorites. But one of my uh, favorites is to go ahead and modify the table such as lateral structure. Here is the lateral structure and it's no surprise that we have negative flow rates. This is the at maximum water surface. So let me go ahead and toggle on all the profiles, which is all the time periods, except for the maximum and click OK. Now you can see that the flow rate is going from the 2D flow area to the 1D river reach. And this is starting off fast and slowing down as time moves on. And that's because the water surface of that pond or the 2D flow areas is decreasing and it's approaching the 20 foot constant water surface elevation in the river reach. All right, well, that was it for this exercise. What we did was construct a 2D flow area. That's a pond adjacent to a river reach connected by a lateral structure here using a, a 1D, 2D connection, and then running a simulation moving water between the two via that lateral structure.